So in this example, we have um, f of g of x equals f of x, oh, f of g of x. So the main important thing, guys, I just you know, relate to you guys with this one is, you know, you guys first learned how to do f, um, f of 1. And this is something you guys learned in algebra 1. So you have function notation, you have the input, and then whatever you plug in for that input in the notation here, you just replace your input variable with that, right? So f of you know, square root of 1 plus 3, that's square root of 4, which was equal to 2. Correct? Yes? Yeah. And then you might have, in algebra 2, played around with this. You might have had a teacher and be like, hey, let's uh, like have some fun. Why don't we plug in like f of 2a? And you're like, what is f of 2a? I don't know. And they're like, just follow the pattern. Don't worry about what it means. Just replace your input value with that variable. And you're like, uh, OK, like, fine, I'll just do it. Whatever you plug in here, that's what you plug in for your variable. So whatever goes in there, goes in for there. And so then I would say, all right, well, let's have some more fun. Why don't we plug in g of x? That's what this is saying. Well, that's kind of weird, Mr. McLogan. That's, I like numbers. I don't like letters anymore. But if you guys look at it, do you guys kind of see the pattern? Whatever I have f of, that's all I'm doing is for x. right? This is f of 1, I replace x with 1. F of g of x, I'm just replacing x with g of x. Does everybody see that? Is it OK with that substitution or following that pattern? And then all we got to do, the cool thing about this, is we actually have g of x defined. We have g of x defined for x squared plus 1. So is it OK if we actually replace g of x with x squared plus 1? I think it is. And then can we now simplify this? Uh-oh. Oh, crap. A quadratic under a radical. Huh. So we got to find the domain, right? Because that's kind of been like the pattern that we've been doing. So now I'll write down what we do because that's x squared plus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0. But the algebra kind of gets tricky here because a lot of people can't really make sense sometimes of how this algebra connects to it. I think the easiest way to understand this is to look at the graphical approach rather than the algebraic approach. If we graph x squared plus 4, for what x values is the y values positive? For what x values is the y value positive? All of them. Do we have any reason? Is there any reason that this parabola is somehow going to ever be negative? No. So guess what the domain is? All real numbers. Oh, that was actually really easy. OK. Yeah. Couldn't you also just square root it and then it'd be x plus 2? Square root it. Like, because it's under a 